Perhaps you know a guy just like Jeffrey, or maybe you're like him yourself. You see, Jeffreys are all around the world and they do everything wrong. They keep indulging in all of the habits that are mentally destroying them just for a little bit of pleasure. After hours and hours and hours of sitting on his crusty computer chair, finally Jeffrey gets up. Okay, good, he's gonna do something productive now. No, Jeffrey, oh, he just laid down on his bed and went on his phone. Adonis. Only a select few men on the entire planet are like Adonis. Disciplined with a student mindset, present and grateful and a leader. How do you think he got this way? Do you think that Adonis indulged in the same habits that Jeffrey did? Of course not. Now Adonis has made some mistakes, but he overcame them. Once he knew that a habit wasn't good for him, he vowed to stop. And that is how he became so great. Do you have bad habits? In this video, we're going to break down the worst ones that you could have. And I want you to do something. I want you to count how many of the five that we're going to discuss today that you currently are overindulging in. The first and worst habit by far is porn. Now, I don't want to make this another basic self-improvement video where we just talk about porn, but holy fuck, it is literally the worst thing that you can be doing as a young man. Watching porn and masturbating literally means that you're castrating yourself. If you've ever seen what happens when a family buys a pet, like a cat or a dog, and that cat's like really adventurous, isn't it? If it's a male, it's like really adventurous, really like territorial. And then what does that family do once they have this pet? They neuter it. They castrate it. In simple terms, they chop off its balls. It stops its testosterone production and suddenly that adventurous, feisty, territorial cat becomes docile, weak, lazy, lethargic. And that is what we're doing to ourselves when we overindulge in things like porn. Now you already know about almost all of the negatives of porn. So I don't wanna just repeat them, but there is a huge negative that most YouTubers never actually speak about because it's gonna get kind of like vulgar. And it's the issue that watching porn destroys your understanding and capability to actually sleep with a girl properly. Porn gave me small dick anxiety. Like I started watching it when I was 13, 14 years old and I hadn't hit puberty yet. So my dick, it wasn't big, you know, you were like essentially still a child at this point, you know, I hadn't hit puberty. I remember watching it with these big fucking like logs that these porn stars had. And I honestly, I can yeah, this is funny. Hee <laughs> hee, like Holmes has got a small, like this was a while ago, right? This was over 10 years ago. But honestly, this isn't a funny thing because this fucked me. This literally fucked me up mentally. Like this was one of the worst problems that I had as a teenager. I was totally convinced that I had a small dick because of what I saw on these videos. Oh fuck. I remember neurotically like Googling this shit. Like what's the average penis size? Like well, how big should my penis be? I've got a small penis. What to do? I remember one of my friends got a girlfriend and I literally asked them, oh, if she wanted to like have sex with you or like suck your dick, like, would you let her? And he went like, yeah, of course. And I literally had this perception that like, oh, if I got a girlfriend right now, I would tell her like, no, like I don't want to have sex or anything because I was so insecure about my pee, -pee size. And the second problem that I had really relating to this was that watching so much porn gave my mind a kind of false understanding of how you proceed, you know, you escalate to sex. So on porn, you always watch it's the same routine. The guy and a girl start kissing, then they start undressing, then they do some foreplay, then they, you know, have like actual sex. It's like this fake, like staged performance. And so I followed the same kind of routine when I actually like, you know, became like sexually active. And honestly, I like, I didn't have a good time. This was the only way that I knew, right? So that, you know, you're like, you, you, you do this whole step-by-step -step routine, like this pattern of like, okay, do this, like, you know, pull up uh, trousers like this. Essentially, I just became robotic when I, when it came to actually making love for the first time and I didn't actually have a good time. Honestly, I started having sex at age 19 and I didn't enjoy it for almost a year straight because of the fucked up perception of sex and like making love that I saw in watching porn. And the reason why this perception so messed up, you know, of like, you know, you watch hundreds of episodes of like fake taxi or some shit. The reason why this perception is like so messed up and you see this kind of like build up and this, you know, this routine that you keep seeing, okay, you're supposed to go down on them and then she sucks you off and then you're supposed to take her clothes off and you know, like your step-by-step -step procedure of this routine, right? The reason why this fucked me up so much is because I was then not even present when it came to being intimate with a girl. I was so utterly in my mind overthinking about what the next step was that I wasn't even having a good time. And guess what happens when you're not present, when you're about to have sex with a girl? My dick didn't get hard. I suffered immensely from this for my first year of being sexually active. And I was like, I'm not gonna lie, like I was a bit of a fuck boy. I was like on Tinder all the time. I was going to clubs and stuff, right? More than 10 girls that I had brought back to my place. I'd done all the hard work. I brought them here more than 10 girls where I would literally pull my pants out, soft dick, unable to perform. There's gonna be some heartless motherfuckers watching this. Like, oh yeah, that's kind of funny, bro. You don't realize how much that fucks your mind up as a man, how much that mentally destroys you. And why do you think it happened? It was because I was watching porn for like 10 years straight before this. This is why I've made a private video going into detail of like the mistakes that I made when I first started like sleeping with girls. I've made it private, it's not on YouTube because it's too like vulgar to speak in detail. There's a link to it in the description, three bedroom mistakes that you're making. So you can go click on that. The second dangerous 
habit that will destroy you is being too emotional as a man. I say this in a lot of videos, but you must understand that, you know, this, this new narrative that you keep hearing that men should open up and be emotional and be in touch with their feminine side, it's pure evil. This like false message that you keep hearing that you should open up your feminine side, that you should be emotional. It's a trap. It is a trap. I'm not trying to be toxically masculine and tell you like, yeah, bottle up your feelings and eventually kill yourself. Of course not. You know, these people, they say that to me like, oh yeah, well, you, 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 how the fuck am I like seen as the bad guy when I tell guys like, yeah, like control your emotions, research stoicism, emotional stability. It's the best asset that you can have. I literally, just, I'm live streaming right now. I literally just told all the boys what happened when our business suffered like this huge like problem. We lost half of our income instantly because of a different company called Skillshare that called us like toxically masculine. They canceled us 25,000 pounds a month. They took that away from us and they wanted me to be emotional. They wanted me to beg and plead like, please, can I just have the money? please? With stoicism, with emotional control, I navigated that situation and we, we prospered from that moment. They don't want you to be like this. I don't understand why. I don't understand why your own country and your own people want you to be weak. Emotional men are weak. Now, this does not mean you should bottle up your feelings to eventually the point that you can't hold anymore. There is one person that you can be emotional to and that is your chosen brother. I don't necessarily mean your blood brother, like, you know, who was born from your parents. I mean another man that you have chosen to grow with, who you utterly trust. There's a metric, like a question to ask yourself. I got from the YouTuber and entrepreneur Alex Hamozzi to ask yourself if this is a real friend. It's a weird example, but and hopefully it doesn't sound like offensive, but this is what this entrepreneur said. If you were Jewish and this was back in the Holocaust, would this guy that you consider your friend, your brother, would he hide you from the Nazis knowing that he would also be killed if he like was found out? That's the metric that my best friend, my brother Sam has like asked himself about me. Like if he was Jewish and the Nazis were coming to try and find him, would I hide him? Yes. That's the kind of metric that you'll know that, oh fuck, okay, this is like a guy that I can trust. That's the guy that you can be emotional to. That's the guy that you can cry in front of. That's the guy that you could open up with. The evil propaganda that's being spread to young men these days and telling you to open up to your girlfriends. People don't realize how fucking evil that is, bro. And I seem like a bad guy for saying this. I seem really toxically masculine for telling you not to open up, bro. If you open up to your girlfriend, her sexual attraction to you is going to be lost because if she is a feminine woman, and we can't blame her for this, but if she is feminine, she cannot be attracted to a masculine man who has just suddenly lost frame and become feminine feminine. If she's a feminine woman, right? If she's really masculine and she's very dominant herself, then she expects you to be weak and feminine. Okay, fine. But if she's a feminine woman and you're a masculine man, by you losing frame, by you getting emotional, you have shown that you are weak. Feminine women are only attracted to men who are like stoic, cold rocks, even though they don't want to admit this. Now, a lot of women will tell you, oh, I'm not attracted to this. I love it when my partner opens up. That woman's probably a lot more masculine and we might not be attracted to a girl like that. There is an agenda here. You know, the people I'm talking about, those kinds of people, the skinny neck kind of like low testosterone kind of people, right? Men and women. They're against people people like us, and especially like me, you know, who's got like this platform of for telling you to not be emotional because they will say that me telling you to be stoic is toxic masculinity and it's patriarchal and it leads to suicides. That's what they say, right? But they don't realize that the rise of this message of telling men to open up perfectly correlates with the rise of male suicides. Less men killed themselves when we were masculine. Less men killed themselves before we were told this message of opening up and being feminine. You know why so many fucking guys are killing themselves? Because they're falling for this, this trap, this fucking trap trick. They're being convinced to not be masculine, to be feminine and be in touch with your emotions. It's okay to be weak. It's okay to be like to cry and shit. They're following that advice and then realizing, oh fuck, women don't like me anymore. Oh fuck, I'm lonely as fuck. Oh fuck, I'm, I'm broke as fuck. I'm not making any money now because I'm an emotional man and emotional men don't make much money. The rise of this message being spread to men perfectly correlates with the rise of suicides. People don't realize how fucking manipulative and evil this is that I am seen as the bad guy for telling you to be stoic. When men were more stoic and more masculine back in the 1900s, suicide was less common. I want you to just picture that. Male suicide is at an all-time high and so is this message of men being weak. Men should be feminine. Men should be emotional. They perfectly correlate together and these evil people will blame us and say it's the patriarchy. These people are killing men. You know, these like hip modern, socialist type of like diversity type of people, right? They're leading to men kill themselves and they will say that the problem is us because we want to research stoicism. Now, I've just spent the last few minutes ranting and raving about how the system and you know, most people are against men like us who want to become more masculine and strong and it's so fucking weird bro why look what i've just done i was just about to say it's so weird like why are they against us you know we, we just want to be masculine so do you know what this third habit that we're going to discuss is being a victim and complaining it's so easy for us right now to think yeah the world's against us and like yes yeah, life's so hard guys did you want an easy life bro of course you didn't because i mean the opportunity for an easy life is right here isn't it go uh, scroll on tiktok bro if you're watching this video you don't want an easy life following on from that you must understand that you can't have this identity of a victim when some shit happens to us like what's happening here i told you about that story of like the company skillshare destroying 
in like oh, half of our income and it's a whole story like there's a community post on our channel that you can go and see if you want we could have been the victim here we could have seen ourselves as like oh you know poor us like woe is me that wouldn't have helped us because the thing is not only does it help you but quite frankly yeah you can say this is toxically masculine but quite frankly but men who have this victim mentality they're pussies they're not helpful at all i sound fucking horrible because this is so against the modern day but like bro men who have this victim feminine weak emotional mentality there's no good to having them around as a man like your only value comes in your strength it's it that's it as a woman you know like we don't expect most women to be strong if the women want to be masculine and disciplined and you know climb up the career hierarchy okay fine nice a weak woman isn't seen as a bad thing is it if a woman is weak physically and you know straight like men even mentally you know she gets emotional like we still love her for it if anything that's actually kind of attractive like some guys might not be because a lot of guys are quite feminine so they don't want a feminine woman but if you're a masculine man and you have this idea of like an emotional woman who always cries it's like that's why i want it in my life because she's emotional like that's that's the point i have i'm a fucking stone cold like i have some emotions obviously but i like i like that my girl's emotional all the time i like that every like three days she feels sad like because it just gives us some shit to do bro like <laughs> so you know a woman who's emotional who's weak and who's a victim okay fine as masculine men will look after her a woman who's strong sweet okay you'll help us carry the weight a man who's strong okay fantastic that's the best thing that we need for a strong society fine but a weak man a man who sees himself as the victim a man who has this victim mentality what good is he honestly you must understand this as a man your value comes from your strength and in the modern day again another thing that's going to get me cancelled maybe like in the modern day bro there's so many like groups of people who love to act like they're oppressed people of, of my race and like, this might get me hated but bro you're not oppressed anymore i don't know how much i can talk because obviously like this is at risk of getting cancelled but essentially you know the minority kind of people not just like the skin color but just you know the people who who act like they're oppressed the people who act like everything's against them that you know like oh everyone's like racist everyone's sexist everyone's this everyone's this everyone's this not really no one really gives a shit about you and i don't even say that as an insult no one really thinks about you everyone's thinking about themselves if you think you're oppressed by someone bro you're not this is why i've got respect for men like kanye he's actually saying to black people to rise up and ditch this victim mentality and this isn't me saying it like you know i'm not part of this race okay fine but it's nice seeing a man who's just like yeah take ownership like your life's better than you actually realize and like this is his words i'm not gonna fucking say it because oh yeah i'm just being racist like shut the fuck up bro we live in physically the best time possible the only thing that's actually negative right now is just our own mental health and guess why your mental health is shit it's because of your own thoughts and beliefs about what's happening to you you know there's studies to prove that what you believe deeply changes what actually happens to you if there's two men who are deeply stressed right now hugely stressed but one of them likes the stress like he has this belief like yeah like stress is stress is good like it really helps me like you know i, I really do good work when i'm stressed and the other one's like oh i'm stressed oh stress is stress leads to early death and stress leads to to the bad health you do realize the effect of stress will actually change depending on what these men believe about that the effect of any kind of oppression or, or problem that you're going through is only based on your own beliefs about the thing like no one will believe this you choose if you want to experience suffering most men are too emotional to have this like victim mindset where they think that this is like toxic or some shit you choose how you feel about anything as a man that's one of our greatest treasures it's, it's our greatest strength we can choose to feel angry if you're constantly overstimulating yourself you don't have this superpower but when you spend a week away from technology you can choose what you want to feel i can literally turn on my anger right now and i can turn it off i can choose what i want to feel so why choose to be a victim why choose to like pretend like your power has been stripped away from you it's our greatest superpower it's just choosing your own feelings you need to like there's some prerequisites to this you have to meditate for a couple of weeks okay fine it's like one hour of, of time over a couple of weeks you have to take a step back from anything that's fucking up your attention span like tiktok and stuff okay fine but after that like our superpower is literally being able to not be a victim a man with a core like masculine energy could be imprisoned and like shut away in solitude and still be having like an okay time because he didn't see himself as the victim and, and there's stories of this there's this one man i don't know his name he was a black boxer in the 1900s in prison for something that he didn't do he went into the the prison cell or whatever like get arrested essentially like with a fucking five thousand dollar watch and everything and literally said to them like you can put me in prison but you can't change what's in my mind and he became the most successful of his life while still in prison he chose not to be a victim about it and nowadays everyone's oppressed everyone's um triggered the fourth dangerous habit that will mentally destroy you literally is negative thinking and this is something that so many young men struggle from because your mind can sometimes be your worst enemy especially when you aren't living the kind of life that you know that you should you can have such deep dark negative thoughts and this can even go into like this weird complex level where if you've started to research more about meditation and everything and also you know you've learned about positive thinking negative thinking you start to have negative thoughts about your negative thoughts and it creates like this very shit cycle where you're just constantly just like being a bully in your own mind and so this is a habit because it happens like just throughout the day and often it happens when you know you think about your lack of success your lack of your know, attraction from girls or something like that you think about something negative and your mind just starts berating you and so many guys who experience this 
don't actually realize that you can control your thoughts a lot easier than it seems. Fighting your thoughts is a horrible idea. Honestly, I'm going to tell you some of mine, right? I've had the thoughts like, oh, maybe I should just kill myself. I've had that thought before, not recently, but like a while ago, a couple of years ago. I used to have that thought quite often and I did the wrong thing and I would fight that thought and I'd be like, what? Why, why did I just say that? That's so fucked. Oh, no, I don't want to. I'd start fighting it and it just created chaos in my own mind that I just wanted to fucking shut it off. And that's why I numbed myself with weed, porn, video games and junk food. And, you know, I just wanted to overindulge and shit to not think about that. What I should have done at the time was more so just observe the thought and realize that my thought wasn't me. That me thinking this weird thought of like considering suicide, it wasn't me talking and just see it more as like a cloud that's passing through the sky. You know, the thought's gonna appear and go away just like a cloud is. And when you meditate, you start to understand that like thoughts are not a reflection of who you are. They're simply like some just random shit that just like happens in your mind. And the skill of meditation is observing the thought and realizing that the thought is an entity by itself. It's not you. You're the person who watches the clouds. You're the person who hears the thought. You're not the thought. You're the person who hears the thought. And so next time when you get like this kind of negative thought barrage, you know, like this bully thought in your mind, which just make you feel shit about yourself. Don't fight them. Don't argue against those thoughts. Don't try and convince them that they're untrue. Observe them like a cloud appearing and going away. And just think to yourself that, yep, in this period of your life, a lot of clouds are going to be shaped like this. And that's okay because it happens. But if you keep staying on your self-improvement and eventually you build up so many things that you're proud of, you're going to realize that all of the clouds that start to appear naturally in your own brain start to become so much more positive. When you've built so much more mu like muscle and you've lost fat and you actually look physically good like you know you look like you're, you're an athlete you look in shape you've been going to the gym you can't help but like just get like an awesome like almost a cringe positive thought in your mind like yeah like i'm, I'm, I'm a beast you know it's kind of cringe but like it's a lot nicer to hear than yeah you should kill yourself and then you work really really hard you study really hard and you get like an awesome grade that your parents are proud of and you're proud of too well in your mind you're saying like yes yes amazing yes like, yeah, i'm so fucking sick yes you can control your thoughts with your actions and too many guys just feel like the negative thoughts and they just kind of don't do anything about it and then the negative thoughts just keep coming your thoughts honestly are often a little bit of a reflection of where you are in life. If you're doing really shit right now, chances are your thoughts are going to be negative. If you're doing awesome right now, chances are your thoughts are going to be positive. And as long as you know how to control them and observe them, then it won't hurt you the same way that it does for everyone else. And the fifth bad habit that will really mess you up mentally is indecisiveness. Indecisiveness is when you've got a decision to make, like, should you move? Should you break up with this girl? Should you do this? Should you do that? And you often just keep playing around the options in your mind without ever actually coming to a good decision and taking action, which means that your mind get stuck in this weird loop like this negative cycle which is so mentally demanding like you probably know this a phrase called decision fatigue and that's when you know you've got to make decisions and your mind just gets like kind of weakened by doing that but when you're indecisive you're getting decision fatigue like around the clock and it's literally fatiguing so i've had this before previously i remember there was a girl that i was dating that i was indecisive about wanting to break up with her like i wanted to but i didn't want to go through the breakup feeling and everything and i carried that relationship on for years imagine years of indecisive years of decision fatigue where almost every single day in your mind you're thinking should I break up with her or not worst period of my life indecisiveness is it's like a weird habit isn't it because you know you were probably expecting me to just say like oh video games and you know like normal worldly things but this is the one that I think is quite unique and it, it's something that I've experienced myself I'm not very good at making decisions generally like you know I want to be better with that and so often like it's really nice that I've got a friend who helps me with this but indecisiveness will kill your momentum mess you up mentally give you decision fatigue and everything. It's not a good thing, man. So how do you solve it? Well, the best strategy to make a decision is to write it all down. And it's so much better. I know this is going to seem weirdly practical, but I promise you it's so much better to write it on paper with a pen than it is to write it on a PC. Just writing it on a paper and writing all of the decisions and the facts and everything that's related to the decision just makes it so much clearer. And suddenly it's like you've made the problem so specific that now you can actually choose the best decision to go forth. Usually when it's all in your mind, your brain and your thought is all muddled up that you can't even make a good decision you settle on one but then you bounce back because you, your brain changes and you know you, your feelings dictate your decision making which isn't a good thing we don't want to be like that at all when you write it all onto paper and you write down the cold hard logical analytical facts of the situation suddenly it's like you have so much more ammunition to help you make this decision scroll down to the description right now and go click on that link for the three bedroom mistakes that you're making click and watch this video right now do the hard work especially when you don't feel like it Mwah.